go. Uh, hi, it seems like a, uh, if you guys have any questions, just yell them out. I think we have a, a small number of people, so um, yeah, uh, what I'm gonna do today, I just wanna cover a few things. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna show you an app demo, and I'm showing you the app demo uh, for the purposes of uh, illustrating the kinds of challenges that you might have when you're putting a uh, web app on Azure, on Windows Azure. Uh, I'm going to show you CouchDB, uh, different options for loading applications on virtual machines, data, middle tier, front end, things like that. Uh, and also um, some tips and tricks that, uh, that we use to get this particular app going. I'm not going to go into the app in great detail. It's actually out on GitHub and you can play around with it and I can answer questions about it later. But uh, I'll just use it to illustrate some of the challenges you might have. And, things you might want to do. So the conference scheduling app, let's see here. There. So it's a pretty straightforward little app that was written by someone who's actually working for us now. Uh, and I put in a few sessions from today's schedule. Whoops, we're not uh, on that screen. How did that happen? Do I have to do that? No. Uh, maybe I have to stop this and then. Looks like I have to stop it. <laughs> yeah, you were right. There's a few issues with this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was warned there might be a few issues. Anyway, um, this is a scheduling app. Uh, it's a front end. It's written with Twitter Bootstrap, uh, a few custom uh, pieces of JavaScript. Uh, and we use um, a cores serve. If anybody's familiar with that, I'll get into that a little bit later. It's a server that allows you to do cross-domain JavaScript from one side to another with a, uh, with a unique port. Uh, and also we use uh, Grunt.js to manage the cores server to actually get it up and running and started. Node.js runs behind the scenes as well. So it's a pretty quick little app. Uh, and you can do little things. You can uh, uh, you can take notes, uh, you can vote things up or down. Uh, one of the nice things about it is it's got an offline uh, version. So if the Wi-Fi is really bad, not in the case of this room, but uh, in other conferences, uh, you can actually go offline and take your notes and everything. And then when you're done, you hit this button and it, goes, it takes you back online and syncs everything up. So it's just a little app. It's, it's kind of a cool little thing that, uh, that uh, one of my colleagues put together. And uh, we got it going on Windows Azure. It was, already, it was running on a different provider, and it was meant to be a client app. So what we did is we actually built it into a, uh, a multi-tier app with CouchDB on the back end, a website in the middle uh, that runs on Windows, everything runs on Windows Azure, and then, of course, a browser on the front end. So that's it for the demo. Uh, let's start here. Okay, starts over, great. So there's a scheduling app. Um, so I just described what it does, uh, uses Node.js, Grunt, and uh, Core Server on the back end. Uh, the demo architecture, as I said, is a Node.js app, so we've got CouchDB on the bottom. Uh, Node.js uh, is uh, storing and retrieving data from CouchDB. Uh, the Core Server is allowing us to talk from uh, another internal website, the middle tier, back to CouchDB through um, multi-domain JavaScript. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about now is just a little bit about Windows Azure. For those, how many people have worked with Windows Azure before? One person. Okay, good. So this is going to be uh, useful then. Uh, so basically, um, you know, the idea here, how many people have worked with clouds? Amazon, other, okay, so everybody has a concept of, of different things. So, uh, uh, you know, you've got package software, infrastructure as a service is the lowest common denominator here. It's basically provisioning a server for you. Uh, it can be Windows, it can be uh, Linux, uh, different versions of Linux as well. We've got uh, Windows 2008 servers, 2012, and uh, three endorsed versions of Linux, which means we support them through third party. And other versions of Linux can be run as well, but I'll get into that in a bit of detail in a few minutes. Um, 
Then you've got another thing we offer is a platform as a service and what we call uh, worker roles and web roles. And the difference is web roles are web enabled, worker roles are uh, just processors that you can use in the middle. Uh, the difference between infrastructure and pass is in the infrastructure you have full control over everything here. Uh, in the platform as a service, the pass, you only have control over the applications and the data. And we have some services that vendors provide as well. Uh, software and, as a service, basically we provide a sandbox for you to put things on and you can run it. So, Windows Azure, um, basically uh, a comprehensive set of services. And this is where it gets uh, kind of interesting for me. Uh, I might be a little bit biased working there, but uh, uh, the, uh, the interesting thing for me is it's not just um, a set of hardware and an operating system that you can work with. It has a lot of deployment facilities and deployment tools. You still have to develop your code outside of Azure, but actually there are some tools you can use that are free to do that as well. Uh, but uh, there's a multiple options for deployment, continuous integration, as the previous speaker was talking about, and um, uh, managing and basically hacking all the different platforms to make them easy to deploy. So one of the challenges we had with our app was that we wanted, if you, if you set it up on a local client and start it running, it actually takes a lot of time to set up that app. You have to download the, uh, the app itself from GitHub. You have to learn how to use, if you haven't used it before, Core Serve, which is the core server for this. Um, you have to learn about Grunt, which manages the core server. And Node.js has to be installed and running on your local machine as well. Uh, what you can do with, uh, different platforms on Azure is you can have pre-configured deployment options where you can actually just deploy something with some distribution scripts and some pre-made uh, configurations that put this out on a Windows Azure website or infrastructure as a service or platform as a service and allow you just to get it running right away. So instead of saying, okay, Mr. User, here you go, here's your app, here's all the other things you have to download, this is how they work together, all these tutorials, you can actually just uh, download the back end as an infrastructure as a service, download the, the middle tier as a web application, and uh, you're ready to go as long as you have a browser on your, on your machine. Uh, we offer the 99.95 monthly SLA, and uh, just like every other cloud provider, you, you pay for what you use. Um, we have a global put footprint. We have, I think there's 22 locations around the world we have data, uh, and the data is automatically dispersed based on whatever rules you want to follow. If you need it to be regional for regulatory reasons or anything like that, it can be actually put uh, uh, in certain locations if you want it sprayed across the globe. So you have redundant backups, uh, complete fault tolerance, uh, that could be done as well. So as I mentioned, we've got virtual machines, cloud services, and websites. And those are the three things I'm going to show you how we built our app. We work with a lot of open source software. Um, I work with Microsoft Open Technologies, which is a subsidiary of Microsoft. And our job is to make open source technologies work on Azure, including a number of Apache projects, as, as, you, uh, as you know, cloud. Uh, oh, uh, sorry, CouchDB. We've also got uh, Solar uh, that I've been working with recently. Um, we're getting some Cassandra. Uh, goodness out there as well, some other platforms as well, and a lot of commercial open source packages too. So, I'll just skip over that one. Uh, getting started, one of the things I wanted to mention uh, for Windows Azure, there's a 90 day free trial, so you can try these things out. Uh, and they, as of last year in June 2012, we're offering one year with 10 free websites, so you can put anything on websites and it's free for a year to try out. Um, I think that's probably just going for the rest of 2013. So, uh, oh, uh, so this is actually a great demo if you get a chance. Um, if you get my slides later, this link takes you to a, a demo from uh, uh, one of our VPs. Uh, we call him Scott Goose, Scott Guthrie, who uh, has a great 
uh, presentation. And even though uh, one of the things that impresses me about this organization is he's a VP, but he's writing code and he's showing demos in that presentation. And it's, it's actually really good. It's a good, good uh, uh, investment of 40 minutes. Um, okay, so Azure and CouchDB, um, we have uh, built-in support for scaling. We also have uh, responsive auto-scaling through what we call high availability sets, which allows you to uh, create clusters of CouchDB uh, easily with some command line uh, functions I'll show you in a bit. Uh, and here's the idea. So you've got your application, you've got a driver, and you've got clusters. Uh, primary and secondary. And what's nice about those is when you have it clustered, uh, for example, for our pass offerings, we patch software, we update it, we keep it going, and um, you don't need to worry about that, but we do one piece of the cluster at a time, so you never have any downtime at all. Uh, virtual machines. Um, so what I did for that application I showed you, we put CouchDB on the back end. And uh, these are the virtual machine options you have. So all I did was create a virtual machine. We used, um, in this case, Windows 2012. Then I put a browser on that machine. I was able to RDP into it, put a browser on that machine, uh, went out to the CouchDB site, and downloaded the software. Uh, and as I mentioned, these are the options you have. We've got uh, several versions of Linux, actually four now, of uh, uh, Linux that are endorsed versions, in other words, supported by a third party for us uh, with SLA and uptime and everything. Virtual machine sh sizes. Um, typically, you know, the extra small and the small sizes here, uh, you're going to want to put a simple website on there, which is what we have. Uh, if you want to go with CouchDB, uh, the, the 3.5 gig and the, and the uh, four disk is, is probably the sizing you want to use but you can use that for reference later. So I'm going fairly quick through these slides as we're already 11.15, got a little bit of time, but uh, jump out if you have any questions. Um, so deploying to virtual machines. So as I mentioned, all I did was create a new virtual machine, uh, install the browser, downloaded CouchDB, ran the installer and launched it and, and started Futon to, uh, to actually get into it. So let me see if I can. All right, so the actual um, virtual machine we used, let me see here, there, this is Futon showing the data that's in there on the back end. As you can see, it's nice and fast. This is over a Wi-Fi connection here in the basement. Uh, and uh, well, there's not a lot of data in there to be fair, but uh, uh, you know, it's pretty much instantaneous access for this. Um, so it's a Windows virtual machine. I've got the RDP here. So we're actually out on the server now, um, and I'm looking through the browser I have out there. But uh, this is the uh, task that I had to run. Uh, it starts a watch task using Grunt, and uh, let me just show you what that is. So uh, Grunt is a, a Javas JavaScript task runner, so basically it's something that we use to fire up a core server, and the core server is... Let me see here. <laughs> Too many windows. <laughs> uh, well, let me see if I can find it. Okay, so when you're working with JavaScript, one of the problems is you can't share things across domains. You can't share uh, uh, data across domains when you're working JavaScript to JavaScript. We've got a Node.js application on the back end. We want to share information with our middle tier, which is a web application uh, uh, tier on Windows Azure. So the way to do that was in, to enable cores on the server through port 2020, and uh, that talks to Apache CouchDB on port 5984 and allows you to run. So that's what we're actually looking at here. That's just a, something that starts up. Now the problem with this is you need to run um, a grunt to make this application work as well on the website. 
And what we've got with websites, when you deploy things, it's really sandboxed. So in the middle tier, we had some challenges in getting that going, but we were able to do that with GitHub, and I'll explain that in a little bit. Okay. Everyone can see that okay? I'm, you know, I think I'm just gonna stay in this mode, uh, which is <laughs> basically um, easier than switching back and forth and changing the resolution. There's something wrong with the, the resolution there. So, um, as I mentioned, deploying the virtual machines, uh, all I had to do was download CouchDB into that created virtual machine, Windows 2012. It's basically a Windows 2012 server. Hey, one of the things that came up last night that you might be of, of interest to you guys, if you're working with Windows and you have a Windows 2008 server and you don't have access to Windows 2012, uh, one of the nice things about the 90-day the free trial is you're able to go out there, provision a Windows 2012 server and try out your apps that way for free, actually. So, just an aside. Uh, the other thing I want to show you was VM Depot. And VM Depot is actually something that the Apache, Apache developers should be quite interested in. Uh, we have a website out there that contains hundreds of Linux images. Uh, and Linux images for Node.js, as you can see here. What else have we got on the front page? Magento, Django, WordPress, Tiki. Uh, literally hundreds of images, some of them well known, some of them fairly obscure, of applications. The operating system in, this, in these virtual machines is Linux only. Uh, and it can be any version of Linux. It doesn't have to be the endorsed versions of Linux that I showed you earlier. It can be any version of Linux at all. Uh, and the reason, sorry, the reason I want to show you that is, um, uh, for example, couch. Let's go. Let's see what we've got there. Oh. thought we had some. Hold on. Oh, okay, we don't. How about solar? There we go. So we've got different versions of solar out there, for example, with different versions of Ubuntu, uh, some of them endorsed versions, some not. Uh, CouchDB, we should have some as well, I'm surprised. Uh, but uh, the idea here is that you can actually, um, uh, how these actually get on here is uh, community publishing. So anyone in this room, anyone who wants to do this can go out and there's instructions on how to create a virtual machine using Linux and putting anything on that Linux server that you want, taking a snapshot of that and publishing it up to VM Depot. Uh, it's a great way to uh, find new audiences for your, um, for your products. Uh, so for example, you could, uh, right now I'm working with a partner to get Cassandra up there. So it's taken them three, four days. It usually takes three, four days for the first image until you figure out the whole process and get the publishing going. Uh, but after that, it's usually a half an hour because you have all the pieces in place. Um, but he's going to do Cassandra, and then hopefully we can get some business partners out there who uh, have something that's running on top of Cassandra. And then we can get them to create images using that Cassandra image, downloading it, adding the things they want to add, and republishing it back up as their own. And we don't charge anything for this. Uh, there, we don't control the branding. You can put any branding you want on it. Uh, but it's a handy way to share stuff with anybody you want. Uh, we've been talking actually to some uh, academic institutions here at the conference about putting tutorials on there. One of the problems with tutorials is, especially if you're working with a lot of different components in the Apache world or elsewhere, um, getting all those components to work together sometimes takes a week longer than the actual tutorial takes to, uh, to finish. So uh, they can actually create snapshots of data and um, small amounts of data and the applications make sure it all works together, publish it up to VM Depot and then people can just download that and share it. Uh, it comes with deployment scripts that automatically put it on Windows Azure. One of the questions that I had yesterday in my Fast Feather talk was uh, can it run on any other VMs or uh, VM uh, hosts? Uh, such as Amazon, et cetera. It's really just set up to, to run on uh, Windows Azure. But it is a quick and easy way to share virtual machines. So that would have been another option for me. If we had a CouchDB instance, 
I could actually create a Linux uh, virtual machine with that CouchDB instance and then just load my data on it for this app as well. Pardon me. Um, so one of the things I want to tell you about as well is the Windows Azure Developer Center. So for CouchDB developers, uh, we've got uh, mobile, .NET, Node.js, Java, PHP, Python, and some other um, uh, SDKs that you can use. Uh, let me go to that website. And those SDKs are good to know about because they have couch drivers as well. So the SDKs are here. Uh, the other thing you need to know about is, um, and it, it's all free to download them and, and use them, uh, the Java. Uh, we have Eclipse plugins as well. Uh, the command line tools are good to know about as well. This one especially, the cross-platform command line interface, that uh, runs on Linux, Mac, Windows, and it actually allows you to have access to virtual machines, platform as a service, and websites uh, through a command line uh, on your desktop. Uh, and the good thing about that, as I'll show you in a little bit, is you can actually create pre-made deployment scripts. Uh, the actual uh, command line interface uh, can be downloaded, runs just like any other command line on your machine. Uh, the syntax that it's based on is Project Kudu, if anybody's ever worked with Project Kudu. It's a uh, platform deployment uh, tool or a set of platform deployment tools. Uh, that we've adapted. It's open source. It's out on GitHub. Where is that actually? Project Kudu. Um, and you can use that to uh, basically hack into, uh, within certain uh, uh, parameters, hack into different uh, deployment options when you're sending these things out to websites, virtual machines, and platform as a service, worker roles, and, and web roles. So, that's the uh, screen I want to show you, the command line. This is give you a little uh, a taste of the uh, command line syntax. So you can create a virtual machine. Uh, you can create a virtual machine disk, uh, endpoints, uh, images. Uh, you can manage images. Uh, and then we've got you know, download, import, some of the verbs, and some of the options you have. So you can actually create some pretty sophisticated uh, uh, scripting to go along with your deployment scripts that you load things on Azure with. Here's an example of provisioning a cluster. So what I showed you before, all I did was download CouchDB through the browser, through a remote desktop on my Windows server, and uh, get it running. You can also, if you're on Linux, this works on Linux or on Windows, uh, you can use the uh, command line interface to create uh, instances, three instances of CouchDB in this case. Uh, and tie them to um, uh, create three endpoints and tie them to a uh, disk. So it's just in, a, uh, in, in this case, we're working with CentOS. So you create three virtual machine images, tie them together by the endpoints and uh, provision disks that, that are going to be using them as well. The disks in this case will be 30 gigabytes. So um, security. So um, one of the things I, that we started out with when you put that app on Azure, uh, we had it running on our local machine, and then we wanted to do the multi-tier arrangement, and we had to figure out how to do that. So the first thing we did is we actually put everything on the virtual machine, which works, uh, and then you don't need the cross-domain JavaScript, so we didn't actually need to run core server, uh, but you did still need to run Node.js. Uh, but we wanted to show a multi-tier app, you know, because we wanted to have that option of having uh, uh, clusters on the back end and uh, uh, a single tier in the middle that points to a clustered entity. So uh, in, order, in order to do that, uh, we had to set up the security using core server. And these are some of the options that you've got for security. Uh, you've got Active Directory, uh, uh, remote management. Uh, you've got a REST API to get in there as well. Uh, Azure commandlets to actually manage the security as well. Uh, and cross-platform scripting, as I mentioned before. So the scripting capabilities, as I mentioned, I uh, already covered a lot of this. So you can reboot the machine, restart. Uh, if you have patches, you can actually 
script the you know, the patches to be put on multiple clusters and and uh, identify the sequence things like that. Uh, so the virtual machine, you know, you have complete control over it. It's, a, it's your machine. You can play with it. You've got disks, as many as you want, uh, and uh, uh, they can be manipulated fairly uh, easily. And when you get into pass, things are a little bit more sandboxed, so uh, you still have application control, and you have some uh, disk control, but generally it's handled by the platform as a service. Uh, and. Uh, uh, the uh, app itself provides security and some of the other you know, version control and stuff like that. Uh, one of our service providers, we work with Cloudant at Windows Azure. And uh, Cloudant, <laughs> this isn't going to work. There. Uh, Cloudant has their own uh, version, as you probably know, of CouchDB. Uh, they also have something that's interesting called Incremental MapReduce Engine. Uh, so you can set up your own platform as a service. In fact, let me go back to the previous slide. There are instructions for doing it on our website. Hmm. See? Ah, once again, too many windows. Sorry, guys. Uh, I think it's this one. No. Oh, just let me go here. And I think if I hit control click, it'll open that up for me, hopefully. Or I guess I can cut and paste it. Hopefully that'll come up soon. CouchDB runs a lot faster. There we go. Uh, so there is an option here for, we have instructions on how to set up platform as a service worker role with CouchDB. If you didn't want to do that or you had customers that didn't want to do that, uh, we also use Cloudant for that. And Cloudant actually has their own um, uh, service that they provide, they manage the disks, they manage everything, they add a service fee on top of that, uh, and uh, they also uh, manage any patches of security and things like that. So basically it's just a place to put your apps, uh, and that's uh, one of our service partners. And we're, uh, we also work with uh, Lucidworks for Solar Lucene and Mongo Labs for MongoDB and a few others. Um, so, so I described a little bit about the multi-tier application. Uh, there are lots of different options when you're working with your apps and data. Uh, in this case, we've gone with uh, uh, website deployment, and I'll get into that in a little bit in a minute. Uh, and we've gone with infra inf bleh, infrastructure as a service on the back end. But you could actually mesh these and create multiple platforms uh, depending on what you needed or depending on what you wanted as well. Uh, and some of the options for IAS, PaaS, and SaaS, uh, you know, there's uh, obviously less flexibility as you get into SaaS, more flexibility when you're in infrastructure, but there's more management as well. So websites. So the next thing we did, uh, when we uh, created that app, I put everything on the infrastructure as a service, tested it out, made sure everything worked remotely with a, with a browser. And then we wanted to do the website so we could have a clustered app on the back end that acts, or a clustered data on the back end that was accessed by a, a single uh, access point on the website uh, as, a, as a middle tier. So what we did uh, there is we used uh, Windows Azure websites. So let me actually go into the... Uh, management tool. So by the way, I should mention that the, the Windows Azure management tool is all uh, web-based. There are clients as well. Uh, and you can uh, deploy things through GitHub on top of that. Uh, so this is the actual um, application website that we're looking at right now. To create a new website, it's pretty easy. You just go um, create website. And you can create a quick create, just creates a end 
just a basic website, HTTP. Uh, custom create allows you to specify different options, backend databases, things like that. Uh, set up continuous deployment. And also we have from gallery. So the gallery is kind of interesting because you've got some standard configurations similar to the uh, VM Depot arrangement, but for websites. Uh, and these are uh, tested, fully functional, full SLAs, updated all the time. Uh, we've got Drupal, Joomla, WordPress, the standard stuff, PHP, BB, and we always actually use these a lot internally for our own uh, uh, tools. So that's just an example of some kinds of the things you can set up. So in this case, what we did, uh, we had to create the front end for that app, which works. Now we knew it worked on our local machine. We knew it worked on the server as infrastructure as a service, but we didn't know if it was going to work as in the middle tier. Uh, we had to start, as you recall, uh, when you go into the remote desktop, we have to start this somehow when we put it on a website. The websites are fairly well sandboxed, as I mentioned, so there's very few options for deployment and setup. But one of the features you have in websites is Git. So uh, we actually created a uh, instance of this with some scripting built into it using uh, Grunt to kick off the core server. We were able to put that scripting in our deployment and we de deployed this out to the website. It actually automatically generated uh, the scripts and starts running the command line for us. Uh, we'll never see that command line. You actually can't access it and you can't actually run things server side uh, like that uh, unless you use a deployment script. So that's the trick that we used to do that. So then we had a multi-tier website that we could actually use. Um, now, some of the options you can use here to actually work with these websites, uh, you can uh, download a published profile, and that published profile works with Visual Studio. It works with a tool called Web Matrix. I think I have that working here, yep. This is the actual site as it looks for Web Matrix. Uh, and uh, as you can see, we've got Bootstrap in here. We've got some source, we've got some JavaScript. There's very little uh, HTML in here uh, because we're using Twitter Bootstrap. Uh, there's a lot of CSS, a little bit of HTML, and some JSON packages. Uh, but uh, in general, the whole application uh, can be actually managed. You can't actually start those server-side scripts, but you can manage the application through, um, through this tool called Web Matrix. And it's a free download. Let me show you here. There it is. Uh, it's actually a free download that you can use, and it's a web application development tool, and you can manage Windows Azure websites from there as well. Uh, I've got a friend of mine who uh, is, teaches at a community college, and he uses this for his, his class. He gets everyone to sign up with a 90-day free trial uh, on, the, uh, on the Windows Azure website, and then he uh, downloads this thing called the Windows Azure Training Kit, which has a lot of PHP and, and HTML uh, uh, courseware all for free, and then they load up Web Matrix, and for the 90 days, they do a, a PHP, HTML, web application development a course, and it's, it's actually all free. Uh, but the Web Matrix is actually a pretty good tool for that. All right. So that's Windows Azure websites. I just want to show you some of the configuration. When you actually put data on the Windows Azure websites, one of the reasons it's sandboxed is that um, it actually clusters your data automatically, puts it on different servers, so that if one segment goes down, you never lose access to your data. So that's how we get the 99.95% uptime. Um, you can also create reserved instances. Uh, so that's another option as well. So next tier up, it's a little bit more expensive, but you can create reserved instances which are clustered as well. So uh, supported web frameworks, uh, the one we're using here is Node.js. You've got PHP, .NET, of course, and ASP, of course, uh, and uh, deployment uh, methods. You've got FTP, uh, Team Foundation Server, Web Deploy, and Git. So I showed the Git deployment for that website. Uh, and uh, these are some of the partners, as I mentioned, when you wanted to, if you want to create a, a website that has Drupal, Joomla, WordPress, takes about five minutes, you can fire up a Drupal website and it's ready to go. If you want to change extensions or themes, you use Web Matrix, download 
the uh, actual uh, configuration, add a module, add an extension, add a theme, and publish it back up to the website fairly easily. And uh, Node.js and Grunt, just a little bit about that. How many people worked with Node.js? Okay, so uh, Node.js is a server-side JavaScript tool. Uh, it enables uh, a quick uh, processing, extremely quick processing of, uh, of data uh, through a queuing method instead of using events. Uh, each time a request comes in, it gets queued. Uh, that is processed in a separate process and then the state is remembered on disk and when you're uh, done with the process, it comes back and uh, puts the, two, the request and the, re and the response together for you. Uh, as I mentioned, it's an event loop with a stack and that's why we use it. And why do we use Grunt? Well, uh, we use Grunt to actually just to facilitate the running of those, um, of, of the core server and uh, uh, make sure that everything's up and running. Uh, I think that's about it. I, I've got a little slide here on an application scenarios. It's kind of hard to see from there. But uh, uh, I, I think I covered it in general already. Uh, what you can do is you can create uh, Windows Azure websites that are multi-tier. First of all, you can just create everything on an infrastructure as a service if you want to, just like you would any single server. If you want multi-server, multi you want replica sets, I'm sorry, in this case, uh, clusters, and uh, uh, high availability sets of your data, uh, you can use the, the multi-tier structure, which will be websites, and or past worker roles accessing the back-end infrastructure as a service as well. And I've got a bunch of uh, resources here. They'll be, uh, I'll be sharing the slides in a minute and uh, they'll be out there on the web if you want to follow up with any of these. And uh, you can take some questions. Yeah. Uh, do you have to buy a license, like a Windows license, to use uh, the service or is that it's rolled in. So uh, you can use Linux. There's no license for that, obviously. Uh, if you use Windows, uh, the Windows license is uh, uh, rolled into your cost and it's charged by, by space and by bandwidth and things like that. Uh, now, interestingly, if you already have on-premise Windows server licenses, there is a way to credit that and so that you're not uh, using uh, your... your uh, uh, if, so you're not paying twice for that license, basically. So if you do actually have some, you know, uh, enterprise agreements or something like that that you can use uh, Windows Server 2012 or 2008, um, then uh, you can actually use those licenses for credit for that. So, but yeah, it's it's rolled in. It's it's uh, part of the it's part of the fee, but no, you don't see it separately. There's no license fee or anything. Other questions? Okay, well, um, I'm going to put that app. Uh, the, the, actually, the link's here. Do I have that link? No, but I do have links for, the, um, uh, for our blog, uh, Windows Azure, the uh, training kit that I mentioned, the SDKs and command line tools. Also, the web platform installer is something you can use to, to roll things out to the web. Uh, I didn't cover that in great detail. Web matrix is the application tool that I talked about for using Windows Azure websites. And uh, I'll also, uh, when I share these slides, I'll put the link for the, uh, for the actual application, which is out on GitHub. If you want to reuse it, um, it can be reused. It works with uh, backend uh, uh, CouchDB on Azure. That's it. Okay, well, thanks, guys. Thank